Yet another personal pleasure for me. So this is Eric Atkinson. He is a graduate student in my group um, that I have the pleasure of working with. And so today he's actually going to talk about some work that he's been working on uh, on Shuffle, so for verifying hand-coded inference procedures. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Atkinson. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, how you can verify programs that perform probabilistic inference. I've been working on this in the programming systems group here at MIT uh, with Kami Jang, another grad student in the, in the group, and uh, our advisor, Professor Carbon. So why am I here talking to you today? So um, as a programming languages person, I'm, I'm very interested in uh, what, what tools people are using to, to write programs and how we can build better tools to help them write, write programs more effectively. And so uh, one thing that really excites me about, about the probabilistic programming space is that I think probability can serve as a really good methodology for writing programs that, uh, that have to, to make, for, for intelligent systems that have to make decisions under uncertainty. So I want to explain to you what I mean by this with reference to an example. So in this example, I've been contracted by, by a company that makes drones to write software for the drones. And this, this is challenging because the drones are operating in an environment that, that has a tree. And the drone has to try to, to avoid the tree. And this is challenging because if the tree has some true position, the, the drone doesn't get to observe that true position. All it can do is, is bounce, bounce some radar waves off the tree and get uh, some, some noisy estimates of the tree's true location. And based on these noisy estimates, it has to decide whether it's going to continue on its path or move to avoid the tree. And so, the code that I want to write in this case uh, looks, looks something like this. If I'm close to the tree, then, then avoid it. Otherwise, continue on your path. And so I don't have a, a complete answer for what kinds of tools you would need to, to help you write this code. But, but I think that in, in the probabilistic programming community, we do have answers for how to write code to determine whether the tree is close or not. And so for this example, uh, what we're going to do is, is given these data points, we can sample uh, potential positions of, of the tree. And uh, based on those samples, which, which help quantify the uncertainty about where the tree is, we can make this decision about whether to, to press on or to avoid it. And so uh, this is some code that does that. And it's, it's based on this, this prospect that we can sample from the tree's location, given, given the data points we've observed. And so I'm going to show you how, how I would write this, this sampling program. So my first step would be to write down a probabilistic model. And the first step of that is to, to write down a prior on this tree's location. So I'm using mu to refer to the, to, to the true location of the tree. And I'm saying that, that my prior distribution on mu is a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 10. And next, I'm going to write down uh, the, the likelihood of the ith observation given mu. And I'm going to say that's also a normal distribution with, with mean mu and variance 1. And so given this model, uh, the rules of probability tell me exactly what I want to know, which is what, what is the posterior? What, what should I believe about the location of the, tr the tree given the data points that I observe? And so by, by taking the probability densities in my model and combining them with some arithmetic operations, I can get a precise specification for what this distribution is actually going to look like. And then I can go ahead and, and implement that distribution. And so this is what I mean when I say that uh, probabilistic inference is a uh, programming methodology. The methodology is I first write down my probabilistic model. I write down a specification of the inference task I want to accomplish. And then I go ahead and implement that inference task. And, and I really like this as a methodology because it's very general. You know, if I, if I have a situation where, where there's more than one tree in the world, uh, I, I can write down a different model, a more complicated one. And my, my inference task and my implementation will be similarly more complicated. But, but this methodology uh, still holds. I still want to write down the model, uh, find the specification for the inference task, and then uh, implement that inference task. And so as a programming languages researcher, the interesting question here is what kind of software engineering tools are we going to build that are going to relate this rigorous specification we have with its implementation? And spoiler alert, in this talk, we're going to talk about a, a verification system that can verify the implementation against the specification. But first, Let's talk about uh, how, how I could do this uh, with existing technology. So one thing I could do is I could go to a low-level language and just write my, my inference procedure. And that might look like this. And so uh, this works, but the, the reasoning that went into writing all this code is, is all manual. So I can't really build uh, good tools that, that could help me out with that reasoning. The other thing I could do is I could go to a, one of the large number of uh, current probabilistic programming systems 
And uh, usually what, what these systems are, are gonna look like is um, I'm gonna write down my, my probabilistic model in a language that the system provides, and it's going to compile that model into an inference procedure. And so here the, the, the methodology is, is very uh, heavily formalized in, in that compiler that's gonna take this and compile it, but it's also very uh, inflexible. And so, uh, and what I mean by that is that we can't generate all the inference procedures that we might want to. And so, as evidence for this, I'd like to point out that, that some of the more modern systems in this space give you uh, escape hatches that, that can uh, let, you, let you get around the, the rigid programming model. And so, for example, I could take uh, this procedure and, and rewrite it into to this one. Uh, I don't know if you saw what I did there, but I took these, these two normal distributions, and because normals are, are conjugate, I can, I can rewrite them into this, this collapse normal object, and this is something that, that I can implement manually uh, using the same, the same raw Python code that I had before. And so, um, so, so now we're, we're kind of back to square one, because now I, I still have this, this code that I wrote manually, that the, the reasoning that went into it was, was manual, and so I have no tools that could help me write that code. So in this talk, uh, I'm going to present uh, Shuffle, and what, what we did with Shuffle is we really took this, this methodology that I've been talking about and, and just formalized it. So we have a, a, a language where you can write down uh, your probabilistic model, uh, including uh, all the random variables that are involved. Um, as, as part of this, you can pull out the, the specification for the inference task. So in this case, I'm saying I want, I want a sampler for mu, the position of the tree, condition on my observations. And then we've also built a language for inference. And this inference language, the, the core objects in it are distributions. And the, the way you use this language is you, is you use distribution operators to compose distributions together. So if I have this, this obs mu joint density, I can integrate it and I can, I can divide it by some other density if I want to. And so uh, in, in this perspective, uh, the role of the distribution, so for obs mu joint, I might want to say that that's the joint distribution of obs and mu is that, that's captured by the type of the distribution. And so, so the, the role of the, the joint distribution means that it's, it's a density for, for obs comma mu, that's what that means. And so the question of verification is now making sure that the, the procedure I get at the end has the, the same type that, that I wanted to accomplish in my inference task. And so what Shuffle does is it runs a type checker that makes sure that that type lines up and then it compiles this inference procedure to executable Python code. So this is, this is Shuffle. Like I said, it takes in a model and an inference procedure. It checks the inference procedure against the model, and there's, there's some things that the type checker can't check internally, and so it generates those as assumptions for a user to hand audit. It then compiles the inference procedure to, to executable Python code, and um, there's so many cool pieces of, of this that I would love to talk about, but uh, in the interest of time, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you uh, the, uh, in a little more detail what the inputs look like. So let's start with the model. Like I said, uh, uh, we're really just, just formalizing this methodology. So I'm gonna show you what the model looks like for this, this tree situation here. So uh, the first thing that I do with my shuffle model is I define a domain, and a domain is a named finite subset of the natural numbers that we can use for quantification. Next thing is to define the random variables. So I have a random variable mu. This is the, the true location of the tree, and uh, it's a real number. I have a random variable obs, and this, this is a vector of real numbers. The size of the vector is samples, and each element is itself a real number. And that represents the, the observations. Okay, after I write down my random variables, I, I write down some densities on them, and this is really just, just taking uh, this mathematical notation and giving it some syntax. So, so the role of the density, like I said that, that this first one was, was the prior, is captured by the type. So this is the type density mu, and this, this likelihood has uh, the type density obs i given mu, and then the, the actual value of the density is given by, by the, the, the body of the density in, in shuffle. So there's a normal distribution, mean, mir, mean zero, variance 10, and this is a normal distribution with mean mu variance one. Okay, so the next question is, is fr from the model we'd like to, to derive an exact mathematical uh, equation for that, that specifies the inference task that we want to accomplish. So what does that look like? 
So uh, you can think of the semantics of a model as if I take the product of all the densities in the model, I get the full joint density over all the random variables. And uh, in a very syntax-directed way, using integration and division, I can derive a, a formula for, for any inference task that I might want to accomplish. And if I inline the definitions of, of this density, this, this uh, completes this definition. And I'll just note that, that the whole reason that, that uh, we have to have a whole separate inference language is that in, in most cases, this, this arithmetic expression here will be intractable. OK, so I want to maybe pre-answer some questions by, by explaining uh, uh, sort of the, the class of models that we're dealing with. It's a very simple modeling language. Um, it's, it's first order, so it's uh, similar to bugs or jags or plate notation, if you know what those are. Um, the models are all, all bounded size, so you can't have uh, non-terminating models. And uh, we're not using a, a measure theory semantics, so representing uh, determinism can be a little tricky. OK, so those are models. Uh, let's talk about inference procedures. So uh, remember that, that for this, this, this example I've been using, we want to build a sampler for mu condition ops. And so in shuffle, this means that we have to build uh, 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 an inference procedure as a distribution with the type uh, sampler mu condition ops. And so I'm going to show you how to do this with, with shuffle's language operations. So this is the code that does this. The, the last line is the one that's responsible for the sampling. It, it samples from this, this mu posterior density. And uh, the remaining lines are, are pieces of density arithmetic that go into computing this mu posterior. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you uh, how those work. So at the start, um, I just want to note that, that all of these things are, based, are, are initially based on the densities in the model. So this obs identity, you might recall, is, is that likelihood that we had in the model. And so if you look at the definition of this, this first one, this OBS likelihood, it, it's really taking the product of OBS density across, across all i. And the rules of probability tell me that if, that if I do that, then the distribution I get is uh, uh, OBS conditioned on mu. And if you look at the type of OBS likelihood, that's exactly what it expresses. This OBS mu joint takes OBS likelihood and multiplies by mu prior, which again, mu prior comes from the model. And the rules of probability say that I've, if I have, you know, OBS given mu times mu, I get OBS column mu. And that's exactly what the type, type expresses. OBS marginal, where we're going to integrate this joint distribution with respect to mu. And there was a probability say that what I get is the distribution of just OBS by itself. And that's what the type says. And uh, finally, this mu posterior, we're going to take OBS mu joint and divide it by OBS marginal. And Bayes' rule tells me that this gives me the distribution of mu condition OBS. And that's exactly what the type says. OK, so there's, there's a lot of cool stuff uh, I could show you with this, but I just want to uh, e explain how the type checking works. So if, if we zoom in on this multiplication here, OBS likelihood times mu prior, the way Shuffle's going to type check this expression is first it's going to look up the, the relevant distribution. So it's going to look up mu prior, which has density mu. It's going to look up OBS likelihood, which has density uh, OBS condition mu. And then it's going to apply a type rule, which says that uh, if I have, it's, it's all, it's almost a, a syntax direct thing. If I have mu and ops condition mu, then when I multiply them together, I get uh, a density for ops comma mu. And so then Shuffle checks that, that this type down on the bottom is the same as the type that you asserted in the program. And because they're equivalent, uh, Shuffle's gonna, gonna pass this program. But if you had written, for example, mu prior times mu prior, we wouldn't be able to apply this type rule. And so Shuffle, Shuffle would throw a type error. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, so after we type, type check, we, we compile it to Python code. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that, that go into this compilation that I, I don't have time to talk about right now, but if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, come find me afterwards, because it's really cool. And yeah, so we have a full language. It has, it has a grammar. It has uh, some, some of those weird brackets to give it semantics. Um, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it in full. I just I really want to uh, emphasize the abstractions that you can use to build distributions in this language. So we've already seen densities and samplers, um, and we have two more kinds of uh, two more types of distributions that that you can build. So we have kernels, and if I have a kernel from you given OBS, what that means is I have an MCMC transition kernel that's eventually going to converge to that distribution. And I can also build an estimator from you given OBS, and an estimator is an object that returns a sample and a weight. 
that can be used as an important sampler for the distribution you've given OPS. So these, these are the four, the four types of distributions you can build. So using these, uh, we've, we've uh, built a bunch of case studies. Um, and so I just want to give, give an overview of, of sort of what Shuffle's good at. So we can do Gibbs sampling, Metropolis Hastings, like we have waiting, <coughs> excuse me, an exact inference. And we can also do variations thereof. So we're, we're pretty good at uh, doing uh, these uh, collapse samplers that combine sampling and exact inference. Um, what are, what are sort of the, the limitations? Uh, there's a, a bunch of the sampling-based inference algorithms we found. Um, they fit into our, our distribution ab uh, abstractions, the four types of distributions you can build, but we don't have language constructs for all of them. So for example, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo gives you a different type of kernel, uh, but we don't have the language constructs for building Hamiltonian Monte Carlo yet. So one thing, that we're not sure how it fits into our abstractions is, is variational inference, and the reason is we're not sure what it means for, to, to verify that a variational inference algorithm is correct. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so, so I showed you uh, sort of what Shuffle can and can't do, but let's say, say you use Shuffle to build an inference procedure. What do you get? So we've, we've proved these theorems that if Shuffle says that D is a density from U condition of OBS, then that means that if you evaluate D, you get the same answer as if you, you went to the model and did this, this syntax-directed uh, uh, integral and division-based operation that I showed you. It gets you the same answer as evaluating the density. And we have similar theorems for, for samplers, uh, kernels, and estimators. And so this rules out a whole lot of uh, errors you could make in your program. So I'm going to give you some examples of those. So one thing that it rolls out is density arithmetic errors. This is, I mentioned before, if you, if you write mu prior times mu prior at this point in, in the program, shuffle rejects it with a type error. You have to do all your arithmetic correctly. Uh, another interesting thing is if you forget to update a variable in MCMC. So for example, if, uh, if I forget to, to sample y in, in a kernel that, that is trying to converge to x and y, uh, this is an interesting error because it's still going to converge, but to the wrong distribution. And uh, yeah, so Shuffle won't let you do that. Uh, and then, yeah, there, there are other things like uh, standard uh, memory uh, errors, like, like in this example where we're reading x up on the second line, but that's before we've actually written to it by, by sampling it. And so uh, Shuffle won't let you do this. Okay. So. Uh, uh, in this talk, I presented Shuffle, which supports uh, the, the programming methodology of probabilistic inference. It, it does so by providing a verification tool for this methodology. And yeah, this was Shuffle. Any questions for the speaker? So in your slides, you had this integrate function. Yes. It seems kind of magic. Yes. Um, Could you elaborate more, please? Yeah. So so this is this is when I said we have there's there's a lot of cool stuff that goes into compiling the inference procedure you write into actual executable code. Part of that is is sort of the the magic of simplifying integrals. But I think. Uh, Every day it's becoming less magic. We have tools like uh, Hikaru and PSI that are getting really good at, at whoops, simplifying these, uh, these, these kinds of integrals. So I think it's, it's an acceptable uh, form of magic. And uh, right now, Shuffle, Shuffle has a very simple simplification routine and we're looking at uh, combining with these so, other systems. So, so the way I should read that is invoke a symbolic integrator that has relatively predictable behavior and expect it to work as opposed to yeah. like run some horrible MCMC routine that has a whole huge inference engine behind it. Yeah, exactly. You're either gonna, you're either gonna figure out how to integrate it or uh, it's, it's not gonna work. It's gonna say, I don't know how to do this. Uh, compile time or runtime? At compile time. So I think my question might be similar. It's about the magic sample command. And yes. I'm, I'm kind of wondering how 
So I'm guessing like I can't just write an expression for a density and you'll trust me that it's a density, right? So do, when I'm first starting to make a density, does it have to be from some distribution that you know about and then as I'm transforming it, you're building a sampler alongside of it? Or how do you sample from just any density? Yeah, so, so this, is, this is a great question. So the answer is, is very similar to integration. Um, there's, like in this case, um, we can simplify this to, to a normal distribution, and we know how to sample from normal distributions. Um, but, but in general, shuffle, shuffle may, may return an error that says, I don't know how to sample from this. Um, but uh, we, can, we can do slightly better for uh, discrete distributions, because if you have a discrete distribution, you can always sample from it. And can I just ask, is that, is that recognition that it's actually a sample from a normal, something that's done based on sort of the mathematical form of the density, or is it something you sort of keep track of from, like yeah. as the, yeah. Right now we, we, we call a simplification routine and uh, see if it will, will give us a normal distribution. Thank you. To, to what extent could you handle something, so you have integrates, right? And so integrate, I guess, sometimes works, and it presumably works if you have to sum over discrete things. Um, what if you have to sum over, say, a Markov chain of discrete things, and you have to basically recursively use belief propagation? Would you be able to handle such a case? Have you thought about it? Uh, would it require more work, or can you already do it? Yes, this is, this is also a great question. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of really cool things that go into this compilation step, and uh, uh, one of them is that, um, and I think, I think this is what you're asking, is that um, sometimes when, when you write these programs, they look like uh, they, have, they have these nested structures. And one thing the compiler will, will try to do is, is uh, pull, pull those loops out of each other, which, which effectively winds up looking like you do belief propagation when you get to the code at the end. All right. Thank you, speaker.